Hi everybody, tonight we're going to discuss aggregate demand. Three things inside aggregate demand. First of all, why is the aggregate demand curve downward sloping, similar to the demand curve for a single product or service? Second, we'll talk about shifts of the aggregate demand curve, shifts to the right or shifts to the left. Then we're going to talk about government policies and what they do to aggregate demand. First of all, let's look at the aggregate demand curve. So as this suggests, it's a curve that shows the relationship between the aggregate price level over here and the quantity of aggregate output demanded by households, firm, the government, and the rest of the world. Now, rest of the world, keep in mind, that would be in the form of exports. We're not talking about the aggregate demand curve for the entire world. The aggregate demand refers to aggregate price levels rising or falling for all goods and services in the economy. It's very important, all goods and services, because unlike a demand curve for a single product, which, which determines uh, for which the price of that product determines output, that output depends on all other things being held constant for a single product, whereas with the aggregate demand curve, this is all of the products in the economy. So let's talk about, first of all, movement along the curve. What things can cause movement this way or this way along the curve rather than the curve itself shifting? Well, two things we need to focus on. One is wealth or what's called real balances effect. So when price levels fall, purchasing power of existing financial assets, so like the money in your, the money in your savings account or in your wallet, that purchasing power goes up and it increases consumer spending. So we get downward movement along the aggregate demand curve. Again, as price levels fall, purchasing power increases and people will purchase more. Second is the interest rate effect. So a decline in the price level means lower interest rates, which can increase levels of certain types of spending. So decline in price level means lower interest rates. That happens because lower prices increase the purchasing power of money as we talked about in number one. So you need to hold less money. And because the demand, because the decrease for the demand in money makes it less likely that I need to go and borrow money, banks are actually going to lower their interest rates to try to get me to go and borrow. And what's going to happen is as those rates go down and prices go down, spending is going to increase. Now, Converse would happen on both of these as well, where you would see price levels go up and you'd see a resulting output, excuse me, uh, decrease in output. Now, the demand curve also can shift to the right or the left, depending on an increase in the aggregate demand or a decrease in the aggregate demand. Let's talk about exactly what that means. So keep in mind that, that shifts of the curve are changes in the quantity of goods and services demanded at any given price level. And that should sound familiar from our discussion of microeconomics. First of all, increases in aggregate demand, what happens? Shifts the demand curve to the right. This happens when the quantity, when the quantity of aggregate output demanded increases. Conversely, decreases, shift of the aggregate demand curve to the left, means the quantity of aggregate output demanded falls at any given aggregate price level. Keep in mind that whether the, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right or to the left, the multiplier in effect, in effect, I'm sorry, the multiplier effect either increases or decreases total spending throughout the economy. Let's talk about factors that shift the aggregate demand curve. There are five that we'll cover. And again, that brute force memorization works here. First is changes in expectations. If consumers and firms are optimistic, they'll increase consumption and investment spending at any price level. So that shifts the demand curve to the right. Changes in wealth. When the value of accumulated house a household assets goes up or down, consumers respond by increasing or decreasing current assumption, uh, current consumption. So example here, weak stock market or real estate market has a negative ripple effect in the economy by shifting the aggregate de demand to the left. Now, let's compare that or contrast that to the wealth or real balance effect we talked about shifting here. That actually shift was a result in price levels falling or rising. So we get a change in purchasing power. Here we're talking about an actual value, or rather a change in the value of the wealth of accumulated, uh, or rather of households. So that's the difference in that, those two. The third is the size of the existing stock of physical capital. So now we're talking about primarily investment spending. So 
as we talked about a couple of modules ago, firms plan to invest in physical capital when their stock is running low, when they're running out of product, and their their uh, customers are demanding more. If firms have plenty of physical capital already, so physical capital meaning the, the means of making production happen, investment spending is going to slow down. Conversely, if they don't have all the physical capital ready, they actually will ramp up their investment spending regardless of the relative price level, which is going to shift that aggregate demand curve out. The fourth is fiscal policy. Actually, the fourth and fifth are both government policies versus consumer policy, consumer and uh, business behaviors up here. Fourth, fiscal policy. So fiscal policy refers to the use of either government spending or tax policy. Government spending uh, equal to government purchases of final goods and services um, and or tax policies to stabilize the economy. Sometimes the government will speed up spending. Sometimes the government will speed up taxation or increase levels of taxation in order to accomplish fiscal goals. The fifth is monetary policy. And now we're talking about the Federal Reserve. And we're talking about the use of changes in the quantity of money or the interest rate to stabilize the economy. We've touched on that in a couple of discussions over the past uh, two weeks. We're going to get into much, much greater detail on number four and five. For now, it's important to remember that those are two of the five factors that shift the aggregate demand curve. Here's a quick chart that just helps uh, summarize the factors that shift the demand curve. So it reads this way, changes in expectations, for example, if consumers and firms become more optimistic, then what happens? Aggregate demand increases. Conversely, if consumers and firms become more pessimistic, aggregate demand decreases. You can pause, go all the way through this. I'd suggest also taking a look at it in your book as it, it may be a little bit blurry in this video. Here was an interesting uh, chart out of the book. This is comparing price levels to GDP uh, around the, the third sort of three and a half year point of the depression. And you can see what happened as price levels went down shows here the movement down in the aggregate demand curve lead, led to a lower aggregate price level and higher aggregate output. This is when the economy started shifting from this horrible decrease in output at the beginning of the depression to increases and increases in real GDP. Now, in, interesting, interestingly, look at this, $950 billion versus a $14 trillion GDP today. Key economic concepts for this module. First of all, aggregate demand slopes downward like other demand curves, but for different reasons. Again, think aggregate price levels. Second, all else equal, the increase in the aggregate price level causes real spending to decrease. This is seen as a movement upward along a given aggregate demand curve. Third, because GDP equals all of those spendings, anything, uh, all those spending components, anything that increases one of those components will shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. Conversely, anything that decreases one of those components will tend to shift aggregate demand to the left. That's it. Have a great night, and I will see you in class tomorrow.